Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Today I'm going to tell you a classic and exciting story about research driving an invention that led to a serendipitous discovery. Neural Diagnostics is commercialising that discovery in the format that's shown in the slide above with the person in the chair. This discovery, electrovestibulography, will change the way, or is a game changer, at how mental and neurological illnesses will be diagnosed, treated and monitored in the future. This is important to all of us here today, and I'm closer to some of them, to some of you, in terms of one in four of us, in fact one in four of the world, will have a serious neurological or mental illness in their lifetime. This covers things from bipolar, depression, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, Parkinson's, traumatic brain injury, ADHD, the list goes on. The di current diagnosis of this is slow and cautious. It's done by qualitative assessment tools, subjective assessment tools, that is how the doctor interacts with the patient and determines what those symptoms are. Because of this, it's, it is slow. <coughs> now the story of Brian. Brian Lithgow was the inventor, and he was in the original Cochlear uh, team as a digital signal processing engineer. When he left Cochlear, he went to Monash and focused on the vestibular organ, the balanced organ, and he wanted to look at the relationship of Menier's disease, which is a balance disorder, and tinnitus. He had to develop an algorithm to extract hair cell field potential firings to do that. His work went well until he got anomalies. And then someone said, Jane has Parkinson's disease. So he takes Jane's data out, keeps on going, another anomaly, and George comes up, at, but George is depressed, clinically depressed. At the end of the research, he goes back, gets another Parkinson's patient and another uh, depressed patient, and the anomalies were the same. Around this time, 12 uh, angel investors, one of them came together, we pulled a business plan together, we invested in four PhD students, all of whom have been, or well, one's close to writing up now, but three of them have been successfully examined at Monash University, one looking at Menier's disease and EVSG, one on uh, Parkinson's disease with and without treatment, one on uh, uh, schizophrenia. All have been successfully examined. <coughs> We've had, um, here's some of the results, uh, which shows what it does. We can determine on real time, on measurement, A, the condition of the person by some biomarkers before and after drug therapy with some depressed patients with transcranial magnetic st stimulation before and after therapy. It's a bit of a thing. We have these latest lot where we can separate healthy controls from major depression, uh, healthy controls from bipolar, and down the bottom, uh, schizophrenia from bipolar. Very important uh, differences, or separating pe people who might have similar symptoms, but this technology allows us to do it. What you see there is 90% uh, accuracy, sensitivity, specificity on measurement. Now th that compares to, say, bipolar disease, where there's papers out there that it can take up to 12 years for diagnosis. If it's Alzheimer's, which we're just starting a, a new facility in the University of Manitoba looking at Alzheimer's, that can take, well, you only get to know that when they can take your brain out after death. Psychosis, there's an automatic six months delay in making a decision on that area. The status of where we are, commercially experienced board, patented IP, international collaboration, strong support from Telstra as one of their external R&D partners, strong support from uh, Texas Instruments to miniaturise the technology, three facilities going now, marketplace in two years' time once we get FDA and TGA uh, um, approvals. Thank you for your time.